out-of-body experiences. So, I think a couple of days ago I started talking about some of the things that used to interest me, probably growing up more than anything, uh, maybe less so now, to do with what you could argue is the supernatural or the paranormal or the unknown. Some of those terms I'm not a big fan of. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, I normally fall on the, the side of the uh, scientific community with most things and uh, logical explanations, which I think is a good thing. There's always going to be gaps, though. There's always going to be gaps in our knowledge and our understanding, so... Uh, but I don't want to fill that with nonsense, you know? So, yes, um, an interesting experience that's reported by people. Um, some who might be in uh, operating theatres, some who might be near death, some who aren't near death, um, interestingly enough, uh, some who might just be asleep, um, and they've experienced an interesting sensation. Um, so we pretty much, all our lives, well, yeah, our whole life, our consciousness, so we're all, um, we're stuck in this, um, this carcass, this, uh, this vessel, this whatever you want to call it, the human body, um, we're locked into it. Wherever we go, we, we're there, you know, <laughs> and we're looking outwards um, from our, ourselves. Yeah, this is quite heavy, isn't it? Certainly for a Thursday morning commute. So you always see the world from your, your perspective. Um, you have to be awake to see it. You see it where you are. You might watch it on television somewhere else. But pretty much beyond from where you can see, wherever you are now, um, that's 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 where you are. That's where you can see. That's what's in the moment, you know. Um, I always wondered if I was in a room. Doesn't matter where the room was, and you couldn't see beyond the walls, the room. But what was going on beyond the walls, the room at that moment, when you couldn't see it? I mean, you know, there must be something going on, but when there's no evidence, maybe there's nothing. Maybe there's nothing beyond what you can see or hear. Maybe that's the, your peripheral. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's it. <laughs> we all see the world from ourselves. Um, I think it's, a, it's an interesting concept about um, that we all could be part of a simulation by a, a more intelligent being uh, or beings or whatever. Um, and I sort of like some of the ideas. Um, and it, you know, it could explain some of the more stranger things um, that are experienced or allegedly experienced, or perceived to be experienced. But it is funny, you know, that um, there's so many people on the planet, and uh, we're not going to meet most of them. Um, they're all doing their own thing. I mean, we, we talk about multiple universes, and that, you know, in a parallel, different universe somewhere, I'm good-looking. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm not trying to think what else. I could be, um, I could be um, famous. I don't really want that, actually, put it. I could be um, incredibly rich. I could be the other end of the scale. I could be destitute. Uh, or I could be homeless. Um, I have been homeless a couple of times in my uh, lifetime. I'm certainly not ashamed uh, to say that. That's one for another, that's one for another uh, episode, I think. Um, so yeah, parallel universes and you know, advanced civilizations, um, simulations, and that we're just running through a series of things seeing how we behave. Yeah, it's interesting. So the outer body experience is an interesting one. And I think for the most part, it's just not real. I think you go into a room, you go to sleep, or you're near death, maybe you're having a heart attack, or you're near end of life, something happens traumatic. And I think the brain is incredible. And I think it goes, Hmm, let's, let's do something here, you know? Let's make this a little bit easier. Let this little bit chaotic, uh, a little bit less chaotic. Um, because we know how, what dreams are made of. We know how amazing, cinematic, and believable dreams can be. So at that moment, that time, for whatever reason, maybe it's a chemical reaction, um, maybe it's the brain you know, sensing impending doom, it portrays a scene. And the scene is, you're leaving the pain and suffering of your body, um, and you're floating above it, looking down at yourself. Maybe looking down at people who are around you. Uh, maybe looking down as if you're near the ceiling of the room, and you, you know, you can you can see yourself there lying there, 
maybe with your eyes shut, you're near death and whatever. Um, and you feel you're having an out-of-body experience. And then something happens, um, and I suppose you don't die. I think because we probably wouldn't have heard about it. But you come back, you're brought back from the dead or you're brought back from whatever it was that caused the brain to project this uh, image of you looking down upon yourself from wherever, you know. Um, and then you, you tell us all about it, which is fantastic. And it's, a, it's, an, it's an amazing thing. And quite specific that um, you should float upwards as well. Um, you don't sort of sink to the ground and look up. I think that's quite interesting. I mean, in theory, you could be anywhere in the room. You could float sideways. You know, why, why are you floating upwards? Um, what's up there? Um, why are you going opposite to gravity as well? I mean, uh, there's all sorts of different ideas about heaven and, and where it is, and hell as well. Um, I suppose the, the assumption is that hell's down below and heaven's up there. What happens if under the ground there's this beautiful oasis? Uh, just an amazing place. What happens that up in the sky there is nothing but the horrible vacuum of space, a deep, dark darkness, pitted with despair and very little. Um, and yet our concept is floating upwards. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the sky looks well. Half of it looks good today, half of it doesn't. But the concept of floating upwards is a, is a, a nice thing, maybe a spiritual thing. I think that's, yeah, that's interesting. And I've uh, been very practical and pragmatic about it all. Uh, scientifically, yeah. I'd, uh, I'd hate the concept of. Uh, imagine if you, you, you know you suddenly started to levitate uncontrollably. You know somehow your body no longer responded to gravity, and you floated upwards, and you couldn't stop. Um, I find that horrible. The higher you got, the less safe the environment. Oxygen reduced to the point where you was getting very sick. It'd be extremely cold. Very soon, you have a hypothermia or hypoxia would uh, put you to sleep. I don't see any uh, <laughs> any big positive uh, with floating upwards. A little bit of flying around now, that sounds quite cool, but no, not upwards and upwards. So yeah, so the concept of an out-of-body experience is interesting. And I have to say it's more of a, it has to be a dream-like sort of quality. But there's a couple of interesting cases. Um, some very interesting cases. And I know we'll talk about one specifically where a person was um, in an operating theatre. They, they were very sick. They were very ill. They were having emergency surgery to save their lives. And I'm glad to say their lives were saved because they were able to recount the story afterwards. But this um, this person during the surgery had an out-of-body experience, could see themselves on the operating theatre on the table there. They could see the, the surgeon and they could see all the nurses around working away. And what stood out in the person's mind, I mean, they could, they could see all the different implements, you know, they could describe all the implements that were laid out. Maybe that's quite common though, what implements would be, you know, scalpels and drills and God knows what else. But what was very interesting, when the person came around and recounted their experience, they said that um, the surgeon was doing something really strange. It was making like a, I don't know, a, a chicken dance. It was doing something, you know. And uh, I can't remember exactly what the surgeon was doing really, but it did look like that. And uh, it was interesting that that was verifiable afterwards. Um, but there are explanations for that as well. Maybe, you know, the patient wasn't completely unconscious. Maybe they were still taking these things in, but it's interesting. <laughs>